What's going on guys, Victor here. I got my bucket of blackfin tuna all filleted out right here. Never filmed an intro, but went planer fishing with my good buddy, Elliot London from Bait Strips. He's coming over for dinner tonight. We're gonna have an epic sushi party. But today's catch clean cook, I wanna talk all about the tuna collar. So I'm gonna show you guys how we caught them. We're gonna go back to the fillet table and clean them. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to cook this delectable yet often neglected part of the tuna. All right, Elliot's getting the spread out now, starting with the long planer. Guys, notice that planer is painted black. A lot of guys will do that because Wahoo, Kingfish, or Barracuda, since it's so shiny, you'll actually get them cut off from time to time because they'll hit it thinking that it's whatever, a bait or a bonita or something. So painting them black really reduces your chances of getting them cut off. How we feeling, Alex? Good. We got yeah. the wa we got the Wahoo magnet with us. I hope so. So this is Alex, this is um, Elliot's buddy. He's actually the shop manager over at Real Deal Bait and Tackle in Pompano. The one and only. So second planer going out, this is the short one. Always want to get that far one out first to prevent tangles. If you guys don't know, Elliot actually owns a lure company called Bait Strips. I'm gonna have a link below. I've done like three or four videos with them before. Um, put our very first Wahoo in the boat on Brooksville on them and very proud of this kid launched the business and it's working out really good for him. If you guys haven't already check him out link below. Oh, 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 oh right that's there. That's on, that's on. Screen. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, I might do. We actually just marked a good amount of fish like 50 feet down in the water column and as soon as we got past them, it looks like we might have one on. What, boys? Two tunas nice can't line. complain about that at all. Not bad. A little bit bigger than the last one. It's not chunky. Cool. I actually haven't had tuna in a very long time, since like springtime, so I'm looking forward to this. Short. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's on, right? Yeah. Yes. Good. Keep going, keep going. Turn left out. Number two, Benita. Oh, hold on, we're on. Fuck it. Right. So, said it was supposed to be southwest this morning and uh, flat calm. Not so much. It's pretty rough out here. We've worked our way north from Hillsborough Inlet to around the Boca Inlet area, just just north of it, and uh, this might be the third blackfin on. Elliot's been on the phone with a bunch of people. People have been catching Wahoo today, it's the full moon, so we knew it was gonna be hit or miss. In the day. So go ahead. come out and play but the blackfin sure do.
sick. That's sick. That helicopter, for those of you guys not familiar with, with the area, he'll go around, especially on weekends, he'll take pictures of your boat. Or whatever you're doing, jet ski, and you can go on boatpicks.com and you'll get a picture. And Elliot was just holding up the tuna, like, holding up the tuna for the camera, so she'll look really good. Is that the sixth one? It's for the five or two. Good size fish. This time of the year. Not too bad. No wahoo, but nice tuna. Big thank you to Elliot once again, dude. Yeah, man. Great day, always. Great day always. fishing. We fished like three, three, four times now, and we've gotten wahoo together. I'm telling you guys, he's the real deal. Right now, until the end of the year, they're hooking you guys up with a code. So you guys can use the code Landshark20 and get 20% off all bait strips. They really work. Tunas, dolphin, wahoo, kingfish, pretty much any pelagic fish that you would normally catch while trolling. You could put it behind a uh, squid skirt, a sea witch, any really application where you'd want to put a ballyhoo or a regular bonita strip. So Elliot's going to show you real quick on how to rig it up. Yeah. Same as any other strip. One hook in the back. Take the other hook, measure it out. Any other strip like this. Plug it through. Boom. Ready to go fish. Just like that. Nice and streamlined, making sure nothing's kinked. So that's with a double hook. Now he's going to show you with a single hook and a pin rig. Same thing. Normal strip. I like to fold the top on here. Stays on a little bit better. Poke it through. Pin rig it like normal. Line up your hook. And that's it. And boom. Back at the fillet table, all the black fins are filleted out. We're gonna have a really good sushi party later. Check it out. Beautiful meat. A lot of people neglect black fin. They think it's not as good as yellow fin, but I think they're pretty dang good. We've never been disappointed with it. So let me show you guys how to go from this to this. Right now, Dexter Outdoors is hooking up all my subscribers with 30% off all soft grip fillet knives. These are the knives with the blue lettering. This is an 8 inch sport fish, what I use to clean the tuna up. So you guys can use my code Landshark30 on the screen here, also linked below. Get yourself a Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever holiday you celebrate, get yourself a new knife for your loved one. When I fillet the tuna, instead of going behind the ventral fin, I go in front of it right here towards the tail half. And I'm gonna cut this little belly section. And a smaller tuna like this doesn't require a knife to remove the carcass from it. You can actually just use your hands because they're not that big. So one hand here, one hand here, just pop it off. You got your carcass removed now. Okay, I'm gonna feed the catfish and the catfish are loaded today. like piranhas, right? Now there's two things we got left to do to remove the collar. So what is the collar? The collar is the section of the fish that's attached to the pectoral fin. It's right, it's between the head and the fillet. So it's this section that most people throw away. There's a lot of meat in there. And I'm gonna show you guys how to remove it. So I'm gonna come up here to the bottom part where the collar attaches to the head. Okay, I'm gonna lift it up like that. I'm gonna take my boning knife. This is a six inch Dexter boning knife. I'm gonna get up underneath there and I'm just gonna break it free. Okay, I broke it free. So now we just have, you guys can kind of visualize that. The bottom half is free. Now we gotta break the top half on each side. So I'm gonna take the boning knife go down, you guys can kind of see where this gill plate connects to the head right there. We're going to go down, slice on one side. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Gill plate inserts into there. And your knife will kind of guide you through that process. Once you do that, now I can just take this and the head should just pop right off.
okay? Head pops right off. Now the gills are still attached. Sometimes if the you don't cut the membrane, which I didn't, you gotta remove that. The gills are attached by a little thin membrane to the collar. Now they should just rip right out. You do not want your gills. So here's the gill and here's the head. We're gonna discard that. That's catfish food. Rinse my table off real quick because it's pretty bloody. Something to note, you know, if you guys have ever seen really big bluefin tuna, they usually dress those fish on the boat and they core them out and all the guts are out. That's why you see the, the guts attached right here. And there's all different ways of doing this, but the point is, just so you guys can kind of, there's the tuna's heart. Just so you guys can kind of visualize what the collar is and the fact that there is a substantial amount of meat on there. That's a good six ounces of fish in the tuna right there. Now, all we got left to do if I see anything really dark like this, I'm gonna shave it away. You don't want that coagulated, real dark, um, bloody meat. That's that's not good. You want just normal looking um, tuna. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clean this up real quick. So, once this is all cleaned like that, you can choose to remove the fins. I think they kind of look cool. Throw these directly on the grill. So I'll catch you guys there. Tuna collar time. So to make it a little bit more manageable and not to put a giant collar on someone's plate, just broke them right down the middle. And if you plan on doing this at home with any fish, you could do this with literally any species. They're all edible. Just try to trim away any really dark bloodline or any coagulated blood because that's really gonna turn someone off. So. If I saw pieces that didn't look good, like some some of the uh, bloodline in there got a little a little brown, so I cut it out, you know. So we're gonna toss them on the Cam Chef pellet grill, skin side down. I made a little homemade Asian style barbecue sauce. All barbecue sauce is is some type of sweet component, so brown sugar, regular sugar, something like ketchup. But in this case, I used poison, which is like an Asian style ketchup. Um, some type of vinegar component. You could do apple cider vinegar, red wine vinegar. I just did rice vinegar. You and you mix it together, you bring it to a boil, reduce it until it's nice and sticky, like this. And that's all there is to it. And then you can add in whatever you know aromatics you wanted, like ginger or garlic or scallion. But mine's just poison, a little bit of gochujang for spice. And uh, yeah, and now we're gonna brush going to brush the tuna collars with this. So we're also doing a little stir fry. Got some carrots and two little yellow onions. Um, got them sauteing. We got some green onions right here. Some scallion going in. Some garlic. And believe it or not, butter. Brooke and I had a sushi night with a bunch of friends last night, and this is all the sushi rice left over. Which, when you make fried rice, some rice going in. So now this is just three, four tablespoons of soy sauce, a little rice vinegar, and some sesame oil. Gonna flavor our fried rice. Fold in some egg. peanut oil, nice and smoking hot, in with the bok choy, and then this is just minced ginger and garlic as well. And this stuff cooks real fast, it's, yes. take a look at these bad boys. These are the tuna collars. So one thing, I did not really season them like you guys saw, aside from the barbecue sauce, because the collar of the fish, um, it has a ton of fat, a ton of flavor, it's very, it's very juicy, it's not a lean part of the fish. So this is what the collars look like, the barbecue on there, and we're going to finish them with some sesame. This is very similar to like if you've ever been to P.F. Chang's or 
any Asian place that serves spare ribs, very similar style dish. Okay, and then we finish it off with some scallion. And they look cool too, you know, it's, it's different. You take the collar, you don't have to skin it, you don't have to scale it, you don't have to do anything fancy, but trim it up. Watch how easy this meat just slides right out. Just like that. Big, thick chunks that you would never know are hiding in the carcass of your fish. And there's a surprising amount. I mean, we're feeding, there's six of us, right? Six of us with six tuna heads, and I don't think anyone's gonna be going hungry. I mean, look at all this stuff just falling out of there. There's a good amount on there, and that's from one half. I already had my other half, and it's it's really delicious. I don't think you could prepare, like, the top loin or even the bottom loin of a blackfin this way without it being super dry. This is incredibly moist. It's got, like, a really good oil and fat content. It's, I really like it. And, by the way, guys, everybody comment below to this guy's birthday right here. Comment below, happy birthday, Brian. That's Brooke's dad if you guys don't know already. Maybe you're surprised by how much meat is in the head. Maybe you're not surprised by how much meat is in the head, but it's amazing when you get to use the entire fish. Like Victor said, we had an epic sushi night last night and we made like 20 sushi rolls and a bunch of other things. And if we had leftover tuna, we sent it with our friends last night. And then to eat the collars today and to use every part of the tuna is absolutely amazing. You really get to respect the fish that way, and this is really, really delicious. Uh, I could definitely see tuna collars being on, you know, a five-star restaurant menu. That's what it tasted like to me. Spot on, very good. I like what Brooke said about respecting the fish. Um, because I'm 61, I've uh, been around a while, I have seen a reduction in fish. You know, you used to be able to go out and catch a lot more dolphins than you can today. And I think as fish get harder to catch, people might respect them more and try and waste less. And, and that's a good thing. I thought it was really neat that he made the whole meal on the grill. That's um, pretty awesome. I always enjoy eating a different part of a fish that we've never had before, going along with what, my, with what Brooke and my dad said. Respecting the fish and eating more of it rather than throwing more away is it's always a a good take.